Hi guys, I hope you are all doing well. Let's see today's question. So today's question, we are taking this up from the topic of complex numbers. And if I talk about the question which is given to us here, the question tells us, let A is a set where Z belongs to complex numbers. And the condition that is given to us here says, mod of Z minus one plus I is from one to two. And the other set B consists of Z belongs to A. So Z belongs to A means B contains a set of elements which are common to a condition which is given to us after this and the elements of A. So the condition given to us is Z minus one minus I in the bracket, it's equal to one. So these are the two conditions given to us. Then we have been asked what is the set B? So how many elements does it contain? We have been asked that. If I talk about the answer choices that are given to us here, it says B is an empty set. Second option B, it tells us B contains exactly two elements. Third option, it tells us B is an infinite set. And the last option tells us B contains exactly three elements. So we need to figure out which one of the answer choices is the correct answer for the question given to us. So if I try to solve this first, let's solve for set A first, where Z belongs to C, which is complex numbers. And we have been given a condition that says mod of Z minus in the bracket one plus I that goes from one to two. So if I solve this condition further, I can write that as one here. Instead of Z, I can write that as X plus I Y minus here. If I solve this, I get minus one and minus I. That is two. So what I get from here is one less than or equal to mod of X minus one plus I Y minus one. And here you get it as two. So you have mod of this is equal to from one to two. So if I know mod of a plus b i, it is nothing but root of a square plus b square. So basically it is root of real part square plus imaginary part square. So if I use that idea here also, it becomes root of x minus one the whole square plus y minus one the whole square. That goes from two to, from one to two. So now once you have this idea, if I square both the sides, I get this one. This becomes one square this becomes two square and if i take square here square root goes away so you are left with x minus one the whole square plus y minus one now if i equate the left hand sides so if i equate this i know it is the form of an equation of circle and since this x minus one the whole square plus y minus one the whole square is greater than or equal to one so you understand their region common would be outside the circle. But for this region, if you see, it is less than two square. So when it is less means it is inside the circle or on the circle. So if I draw the two circles first, I have my X axis, this is Y axis, and I have my general equation of circle as X minus H the whole square plus Y minus K the whole square equals R square. So from that, I get the H and K, that is the center coordinates as one comma one. And R, it goes, if you see, from one to two. So R goes for one for the first equation, for second, it becomes two. So for the first equation, we know it is greater than one, so it is outside the circle. And for the second equation, we know it is less than or equal to two squared, so it is inside the circle. So basically, the common region will be between the two circles. But both of the circles have same center coordinates h comma k that is one comma one. So since you have the same center coordinates for both the equations, I understand it is nothing but a concentric circle. So if I plot one comma one, it will be somewhere here. So this is the center of the circle. The first circle has the radius of one unit. So it will coincide at this point, this point, and this and this. So here your coordinate would become two comma one and here it would become one comma one. Since the radius is of one unit. So your circle would look something like this. So this is your inner circle and outer circle has a radius of two. So if I get the radius of two here from here, if I 
a distance of two units I see it will be one comma minus one. Here it will be one comma three. Then you have here two comma three, and here you have two comma minus one. So you get a outer circle as well. That is something like this. So you have these two circles. Now, once you have the two circles, you know the common region lies between the two circles. So this is your common region which lies between the two circles and this becomes your set A. So you get your set A here. Now, once you have the set A here, you have the elements of set A common to both the circles that is between there. Let's go for set B. So set B, if I see, it tells us the condition that Z belongs to A. So Z is common to, so basically the set of elements of B are common to set of elements A and the second equation which is given to us as Z minus one minus I is equal to one. So if I use that idea now again in the mod, it is there. So I can write that as X plus Y I, that is your complex number Z minus one plus I is equal to one. So I get this as X minus one plus I Y, y plus 1 in the mod is equal to 1. So what you get from here is if I have mod of this I again know it is root of a square plus b square. So x minus 1 the whole square y plus 1 the whole square equals to 1. If I square both these sides I get that as x minus 1 the whole square plus y plus 1 the whole square is equal to 1 square. So once I have this I know it is nothing but the exact equation of the circle. So if I compare it with x minus h the whole square plus y plus y minus k the whole square equals r square. I know radius is one unit. H comma k if I try to figure out it is one comma minus one. So you get the center of the circle B as h comma k equals one comma minus one and radius is one. So if I plot that circle here I have my center coordinates as 1 comma minus 1 and my radius is of 1 unit. So if I draw a circle at a radius of 1 unit, it will go something like this. So you will have this touch. Now what is the question telling us is, question is asking us that we should be satisfying this condition that we have got it, but it is equal to 1. So equals to 1 means it is on the circle. So the common points are on the circle, but Z also belongs to A. So in A, if I see the common points, I have all of these points common. So there are many points in the set B, this element or this is your set B, which consists of so many number of elements. So if I see the answer choices that matches here with the question, B, I know it is definitely not an empty set. It does not contain only two elements nor three elements. So basically the only answer choice I'm left with is B is an infinite set because it contains infinite number of elements that are common to the elements of set A as well as the elements that lie on the circle. B. Now make a note here for this question that for A set it was given greater than or lesser than as well. But here it is given just equals to it means it is on the circle. If it is lesser than, it becomes outside, inside the circle, sorry. But since here, Z minus 1 plus I is greater than 1. So greater than means it is outside the circle. But this condition says it is inside the circle. Or on the circle as well. So I understand this are all the points that I will have in common. And when I have all of these points in common, I understand that B element consists of infinite number of elements. So that matches with option C and it becomes the correct answer for the question. I hope you have understood how to solve this type of questions which deals with the ideas of complex numbers. I'll see you again tomorrow with some other question from some other topic. And we are going to continue our series of questions on 11th, 12th as well as JWE mains. So stay tuned for more videos to roll out. Also, do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Do share these videos with your friends who also are involved in the preparation of questions.
so they can also take the benefit from this question which we are solving on thank you